Istanbul is one of the most wonderful cities on earth. The history and cultural heritage, the unique vibe of the countless narrow streets where magical Asia meets European modernity right across breathtaking Bosphorus. Istanbul is unique and unforgettable. Walking down the streets of my favorite city, I couldn't help noticing children who seemed lost and hopeless, begging on the most crossed streets. I kept wondering who they are, where do they come from, where their parents are, what happened to them and what could be done to help them. It took me several weeks trying to get what is right and wrong in terms of supporting children of the streets. These children are not invisible, we see them every day. Heart is going into pieces when we notice a hungry child in shabby clothes and barefoot spending days and nights in the street trying to get the money for bread. After a month of exploring the subject, I still don't have an answer on how each of us can give them a better future. Nowadays, the number of homeless children has decreased. Children who don't have parents can live in children's villages. Some of those who we see on the street live with their families in rural areas and poor living conditions. Dusty streets, destroyed buildings, all of it makes their depressing reality. They're spending their childhood working for the family, selling goods on the roads, sorting garbage and begging in their touristic areas. Most of them are children of war in Syria. They don't have any idea that life can be any different. They have never experienced a carefree childhood. Instead of getting an education, doing sports and enjoying this cheerful time of life, they are forced by adults to follow the certain lifestyle on the edge of survival. They didn't choose to trade their childhood to violent street laws. It looks like a vicious circle. Adults do have options, but the children only learn by personal example. Having no other experience and desires besides getting money on the street, they are driven by freedom, control and discipline free life. When you want to help, you have to be judgment-free. Talking to children every day, trying to find out what their thoughts and needs are, I learned that the street became everything for them. It's their school of life, family, work, their own small world they are attached to, and that's where they feel home. Street lives by its own laws, it teaches you how to survive, meets you with friends for life, bringing up all your weaknesses and strength. Who do you see when you look into their eyes? Today they are just kids, young, wild and free-spirited. They dream to become doctors, policemen, football players, but how will it turn out for them? Is there any chance to have a brighter future? Their perspectives are limited to street life. Can we say it's their choice to live like Mowgli's in stone jungles? They don't know any better than that. They come to the world as pure souls, simply blank peppers and they sketch the street draws on them, rarely turns into colorful painting. How they are gonna live after depends on the family they were born, on society and the surrounding. Who are they going to be? Which side will they take? And most importantly, who are we to judge them?
I asked one boy living on the street if there are more good or bad people. He said the majority is bad. How to change the situation? The general picture is not up to us, but we as individuals, one by one, can choose kindness over hate, being understanding instead of judging, accepting instead of excluding, and questioning things instead of passing by. Staying indifferent to others regardless of their life is the highest form of humanism. Loving children, despite their circumstances, is true humbleness. I know for sure that when you do something with a good intention, you are doing the right thing, but at the same moment you don't bring their childhood back. Mess and dirt around them has never been their choice in the first place. None of them would have chosen it deliberately. They separate themselves from us just as much as we try to avoid the feeling of shame, pity and discomfort by throwing them coins, thinking we save lives. But in fact, we maintain the wall, dividing the crowd to us and them. Helping others is finally more about ourselves. It defines the given person more than the receiving one. Not all of the ones in need realize it too. <laughs> Can a person who has never experienced any kind of fair childhood and any standards of social life grow into a respected member of society? And most importantly, do we have any chance to break this unfortunate circle of circumstances and to breathe new life into these children who became the victims of adults' mistakes?